beautiful day here in Charlotte, 44 degrees, mostly sunny. There is a little bit of wind, but this is a perfect day. Second week of December, what a great day for football. Jake DeLome will be going on offense first as the Panthers have received, have won the toss, selected to receive his offensive line. The big matchup will be Travell Wharton at left tackle against Simeon Rice, who has nine sacks. Deshaun Foster rushed for 131 yards last week, 49 yards receiving, a touchdown rushing and receiving. Chris Mangum, the tight end. Michael Gaines is out. We'll see some of Mike Seidman as the second tight end. You know, Sam, we're, we're fairly lucky today. Why? You see, there's, you see some of the temperatures oh, around the country? Oh, man. Green Bay? Oh, oh. Don't want to be there. We're in a good spot. Matt Bryant will kick off. He missed last week's game with a groin injury, but he is back. They, he practiced all week and tested the leg in pregame warmups. Rod Smart is deep to receive. And the battle for first place in the NFC South is on. Smart, as it bounced, takes it at the three. Picks up a block. The Bucks are there to cover him at the 22. Will Allen, who's back in the lineup, made the tackle. Defensively, the Bucks are strong up front. Simeon Rice, nine sacks. Greg Spires, three. Chris Hovan, in his first year with the Bucks, has done a solid job inside at the nose tackle position. Shelton Quarles is the leading tackler. Derek Brooks, perennial all pro. Dante, Rondé Barber had three interceptions last year, almost the fourth. Dexter Jackson is the former Super Bowl MVP. Foster and Hoover in the backfield. And DeLone puts it up and completes it. And out of bounds is Steve Smith. He tur turns a little short pass into a beautiful big gain up to the 25. He picked up 23 on the play. Rondé Barber chased him out. Uh, a couple things happened on that play. One, when you get you to the game breakers that we had talked about, right at the top, you're going to see him. Here's Steve Smith, right there. There he's the outside. But to that side, Tampa opened up defensively with a safety blitz. They brought Dexter Jackson on a weak side blitz, and that didn't leave any help once Steve Smith got past Rondé Barker. His first carry, Deshaun Foster in a Bucks territory. Down to the 47, Jermaine Phillips. The strong safety on the tackle. So Foster, who had a great game last week, picks up eight. A nice pickup off, off the first play action pass. You know, the thing about it is for both of these teams, Sam, is they've got to jump out fast on top. And what I mean by that is a quick score. So for both offenses on the field, it's important for them to score fast because the makeups of this team, these teams, is about putting pressure on you defensively. Here's Foster again. Big hole. Great run by Deshaun Foster down to the 32. Picks up 16 on the play. Brian Kelly took him down. Deshaun Foster talks about his improved patience that Stephen Davis has helped him with. Watch it here. You're exactly right. Watch the handoff and watch him take this into the hole. See, right there, he stops, stutters, and waits for his linemen, his wide receivers, and his tight ends to make the blocks. Let the big guys do their job. Don't be forcing them to do it. Wait on them to do it because they will create a hole in time. Picked up 15 on the play. What? Chris Mangum, the tight end in motion. Two tight ends in. And it's Foster cutting it back. Breaking one tackle, getting down to the 27-yard line. Deshaun Foster had a breakout game last week. After Stephen Davis started, he was inserted, broke tackles, ran hard, 131 yards rushing. That's his second highest single game total in his career. And he was great out of the backfield, turning a short pass into a touchdown. One rushing touchdown, one receiving touchdown for Deshaun Foster. 180 total yards in the game. Three carries, 28 yards so far. Carries again behind Mitchell. Slips one man and is wrestled down at the 25. You know, one of the things that one of the things they did there is that that's 
a game changer, computer changer, stat breaker. And they th go to the weak side. When you pull Mike Wall or you pull also Jeff Mitchell, usually they're pulling to their right. Now, th this was a change of pace. Now they're attacking the weak side. And Deshaun Foster runs well behind those pulling guards or centers or whoever's pulling. And that's where he's learned that patience. Steven Davis is the one that taught him it. But what, waiting for those guys to get out in front is what's really helped him. Third and two, Foster goes in motion. Below. Waits and throws short. He was backing up as he threw, and the pass intended for Deshaun Foster, about a yard underthrown. Shelton Quarles came blitzing in and had the big arms up in the face of Jake DeLome. So the field goal kicking unit comes out. You know, the thing about it was that they drove down the field. It was a nice march. There were some things in there they had done a little differently than they'd done in the past. But this right here is important. Three points to start off an opening drive for these two style of teams is very important. 42-yard drive for John Casey. The kick on the way stays left. He missed it wide. So a good offensive drive ends empty for the Carolina Panthers. John Fox wanted points early, didn't get them. Chris Sims, three and one in his last four, starts with only one interception thrown, and the one loss could have been a win. The offensive line, Kenyatta Walker has got to find a way to handle Julius Peppers. That'll be a big matchup. Cadillac Williams running strong again, 296 yards in the last three games after a four-game drop-off. He had the great start to the season. Al Wallace starting for the injured Mike Rucker. On first down, Cadillac Williams, nothing there. Maybe a loss of a yard. Good play up front by the Panthers defense. Pushing and shoving going on as the tempers flare early. And the emotion is up. These two teams have had some tough battles. Some strong feelings there. Up front, Al Wallace, who can start on a lot of teams, starts for the injured Mike Rucker. Julius Peppers has seven and a half sacks this season. Brenson Buckner tough on the inside. The linebackers, Dan Morgan, after missing two games, is back. And Chris Gamble has four interceptions in his last five games. Sims, short drop outside to Galloway. And he's wrestled down by Ken Lucas. There's a similar pass to the one thrown to Steve Smith, but Lucas right up on Galloway to take him down. Well, and this is some of the things that I believe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to have to do. They're going to have to throw the ball quickly. And it's going to be your three and five step drops. I don't know if they can go five step drops. That was three. Five step, that's a medium sized time of, of pass drop. I don't know if they have that kind of time with Carolina's defense. I think you're going to see a lot of three-step drop by the quarterback and ball out of his hands. Michael Pittman in the backfield, three wide receivers. Clayton in motion. Sims on third down, puts it up deep for Galloway, just missed. Off his fingertips. Minter and Lucas covering. Galloway almost had it. Well-thrown ball, and this is what I think they're going to have to do. Take their shots when they have that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Here it is, third and two. Tampa Bay doesn't have the faith in their offensive line to move that Carolina defense. Third and two, 99% of the teams would bowl it over and pound you. Or a quick pass, they decided to take their shot. It was a well-thrown ball. Josh Bidwell to punt. He leads the NFC with a 46.1 yard average. Booms this one. Steve Smith backpedals, takes it at the two, and returns. And is upended and down at the 12-yard line. Calvin Pearson takes him down. Bidwell with a strong leg. He's had at least one 50-yarder in every game this season. John Gruden came to Tampa Bay and won a Super Bowl in 2002. John Fox came to Carolina, won a Super Bowl in 2000, got to the Super Bowl in 2003, wants to get back there this year. He feels he's got a team that is much like his Super Bowl team in 2003. From the 12-yard line, second possession, Deshaun Foster for the 16, picks up four on the play. The Bidwell punt, by the way, was 58 yards. 
Deshaun Foster, I think one of the keys in looking at him, Bill, is the relationship that he and Stephen Davis had. Davis, not upset at all, has really mentored him and helped him a lot. Well, I think aging players and older players, when, it, when they realize that the end is near, they don't have much else to do but offer their insight and help. I think most older players do that. They've taken what they've learned and want to pass it on. It's their only kind of heritage you have in this league. Ricky Kroll in as the third wide receiver. The toss to Foster, couple of blocks. Nice job by Derek Brooks coming up to make the tackle at the 19-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline to Jay Glazer. Well, guys, Deshaun Foster's play obviously making John Fox very happy, also making his future bank account very happy. He is a free agent after the year. I talked to their general manager, Marty Herney, before the game. Marty said, we've had some discussions. We have not exchanged money, but we do intend to keep him, and he knows that at this point. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jay. You know, I think one of the things, you know, when, when you talk about new contracts, you talk about his success now you have to look at what the team and how they viewed him and the thing they've seen is a guy that sat on the bench and waited his turn and learned it hasn't been a problem on third and two foster stop good tackle by the safety jermaine phillips as foster looked for a hole phillips closed it and a good defensive series again this time a better defensive series by the by the Bucks last time they stiffened and forced a field goal let's, try let's go back to that fantastic punt by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Josh Bildwell nailed one down there now Monty Kiffin's defense comes out and they hold him to three and out this changes the field for the Tampa Bay Bucks they are going to have a very short field here to work with Jason Baker good punt Mark Jones on the return trying to get outside he does and is out of bounds up at the 46-yard line. Good return by Jones. The long snapper, Jason Kyle, chased him out. And here we go. Some more pushing and shoving. The battle for territory and turf rights. Jerron Bolden is separated. 44-yard punt, 10-yard return. Bucks on offense when we come back. This is the NFL's number this season on where the ball is. Right now, the Tampa, Tampa Bay Bucks got the ball right there, almost around the 50-yard line. See the rate of scoring in this league, in the NFL, when you're at the 50 or inside it? It increases the shorter the field you have to go. Tampa Bay in good position here to make a run at something. Clayton in motion, straight ahead, Cadillac Williams gets up to midfield, and the flag on the play. Picked up four, we'll check out the flag. It's against Carolina. Walt Coleman is our referee. Holding, 99, defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Brenson Buckner, the inside man, the defensive tackle with the hold, something you don't often see. Well, here's Buckner. He's going to be right there. See him, 99. Now watch. Dan Morgan is back in the game, and he's been injured for a couple weeks. So he's got these two guys tied up with their shirt and their other arm to try to keep that guard and center off Dan Morgan, because Dan Morgan's just returned with that severe ankle injury. Michael Pittman is in, but he's split out. Cadillac with him straight ahead. is hit right away. Good job by Dan Morgan as he gets to the 45. JB's got an update on the Steelers. JB. Hey, Sam, Steelers looking to snap a three-game losing streak and to stay alive in a playoff race. Little screen pass to Heinz Ward. Look at the second and third effort here, Sam. Maybe a little poor tackling there by the Bears. First touchdown, the Bears have allowed on an opening drive. 7-0, Steelers over Chicago. Back to Sam, Bill, and Jay. Thanks, JB. Steel the Bears have won eight in a row. Steelers trying to Stay in contention in the AFC North Division. Sims throwing outside, caught by Clayton, and he dropped it as he was hit by Ken Lucas. And that has been Michael Clayton's problems this year. Sophomore slump, you heard of those before? Last year he came in as a rookie and really had one of the best seasons of all those receivers that came into the league in 2004. Oh, he's had a huge drop-off, Billy. Averaged 74 yards a game receiving last season. He's 29 yards per game this season. Well, yeah, there's one thing that young guys, I don't care what position they play in the NFL, need to learn. It's never about what you did. Third and 10 for Tampa Bay. Carolina with Thomas Davis and Kendall Moorhead in on defense. Deep drop by Sims, has time, throws, and completes it to Joey Galloway. First down at the 28-yard line. 
Ken Luke is covering on the play. They picked up 17 as Sims goes to his favorite receiver, Joey Galloway. Well, and you can go to any receiver you want to on the face of this planet, Sam, if you have time like that. This is third and long. This should be three-man rush is all they come with. Three-man rush on third and long is all the Carolina Panthers came with. I don't quite understand that philosophy. I and mean, when you when you guys get this, you third and long against a quarterback, a young quarterback, you bring the house. Bucks shift the running backs wide. Williams takes the pass, bounces off the hit, and is forced out of bounds. He was hit first by Mike Minter, and then Dan Morgan taking him out at the 27. An interesting formation by the Bucks. They had both. Oh yeah. Uh, Mike Allstott and Cadillac Williams shift wide. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of that from John Gruden. Well, you know, John likes to get creative in the shift and motion category. Because a lot of times when you don't have what you need, you have to kind of use smoke and mirrors, if you will. And by trying to keep the defense alert and moving and shifting with all your motion, maybe it'll take an edge off that defense. Williams cutting it back and he's brought down at the 25 yard line. Good tackle on the play by Will Witherspoon. The outside linebacker bring up a third and long for Tampa Bay. Well, Will, Will Witherspoon, number 54. This is him, you'll be him right here. Now, when you see a running back at the ball, your tendency is to take off and run. But watch him play the cutback. That, that, that's really, really good because a lot of times linebackers want to use their speed and flow and run and they get over the top and that's when the running back uses a cutback lane. Three wide receivers in, Hilliard the third in motion on third and seven. Short drop to Galloway again. First down inside the 15. Ken Lucas touched him down, but once again, it's Joey Galloway getting open. Sims hitting him for the third time in the game at 11 yard pickup. Wow. Wow, Tampa Bay. You see, remember we go back to the short field thing and we go back to that punt that they had, that Bidwell had? Look at what look at what it's doing for them. They're, they can see the goal line. They can march down the field. And it's been the creativity of this and that and motions and shifts and formations that has kept the defense, the Carolina Panthers, off balance. Good protection by the offensive line as well. Two tight ends, two backs, one wide receiver is Galloway. There's Cadillac Williams, got the hole, inside the 10, he's in, touchdown! Cadillac Williams takes it in, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take the lead on a beautiful 56, 54-yard drive. It's not so much what you do, but sometimes what happens to you. And the Carolina Panthers were in the backfield and actually made contact with Cadillac Williams in the backfield. They didn't wrap up. He missed the tackle, Will Witherspoon, and that's what sprung that whole thing open. We'll get to a replay here as soon as this kick. Fourth touchdown run by Cadillac Williams. Matt Bryant for the extra point. And the Bucks get on top. Eight play, 54-yard drive, 14-yard touchdown run for Cadillac Williams. Nice hole, nice run, Bucks lead. Take a look at number 54, Will Witherspoon. He's going to be right here, the Carolina linebacker. Take a look, he's going to come shooting through and there's his shot right in the backfield at Cadillac Williams. He hits him and he doesn't wrap up. And here goes a tackle for a loss to a touchdown. Matt Bryant kicks off. Rod Smart comes up to the 11. Looking for some room. Gets outside and the Bucks take him down at the 32 yard line. Calvin Pearson make that Dante Nicholson on the tackle. In Carolina, Jay Glazer, and you're looking at Julius Peppers and Mike Rucker, and there was a chance that the Carolina pa Panthers were not going to have either one of them this week. In fact, on Monday, head trainer uh, Ryan Versillian came over to John Fox and said, Fox, I think he's out two to four weeks, Peppers. He came in the next day on Tuesday. All the swelling in his ankle was gone. He was back in the lineup on Wednesday. John Fox said, this guy is a freak of nature. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jay. Quick out to Smith, and he's brought down right away. Good tackle by Rondé Barber. 
That touchdown oh given up by the Carolina defense was the first touchdown they've given up in the last 12 quarters. You have to go back to the first quarter of their game in Chicago for the last touchdown they gave up. So the Bucks taking advantage of good field position and, to and score. The importance I go back to these two style of teams and their philosophy and their structure and how they're built and how they play. It's so important to score early. That missed field goal by Carolina and John Casey, it, and that, that was costly. Sean Foster, one man, but that the next, and there's a flag on the play. Check it out. Walt Coleman gets the word, and hopefully he'll give us the word in a moment. It's against Hold Carolina. It. 68 offense, 10 yard penalty, still singing out. Mike Wall, the left guard, call, called for the hole. You know, I, I talk about those things, the philosophy of the teams and how they're built. Oh, uh, that's another no no. You know, this offense has some of the fewest penalties in the whole NFL, Sam. And, and, and that's what you try to do minimize penalties, create a short field, take the ball away, and on offense, take care of the football. I, and if you use that philosophy and play good special teams, You'll win 90% of your games. Second and 19 off the play fake. Screen to the tight end. There's a flag on the play. So suddenly it's Carolina that looks to be emotional, making mistakes early. Emotional intensity, Stan. You know, that's what I was talking about. And when I talked about this, these two teams during the pregame show. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, 96 defense. 15-yard well, penalty, automatic. My apologies. There's a face mask against Tampa Bay. Ellis Wims, who looked at the referee, Walt Coleman, and couldn't understand the call. So it is against the Bucks, and that hurts them as face Carolina masking. gets a first down. Face masking doesn't only have to come against a player with the football. Face masking can come right there. You saw Ellis Wims. See the face mask he has on the on 76, Duden Rays? It's not just who has the ball. Face masking, you can happen anywhere on the field. The tight ends in. Delone being pressured. Throws wide of his tight end, Chris Mangum. Now it's time for an update. JB is standing by as usual. Take it away, JB. Vikings 5 0 with Brad Johnson at the helm. He pitches back to Seattle, cast off Corin Robinson. He scores his first rushing touchdown of his career 13 yards, 8 plays, 80 yards, 7 0. Vikings back to Sam and Bill. You believe those Vikings? Hey, JB, how are the sliced tomatoes today? I hope they took care of them. 53. Wayne White and Ellis Wims on, in on the defensive line for Tampa Bay. Foster looked at the penetration. Outstanding play by Jermaine Phillips, the safety. Ryan Neese was there, and Foster had nowhere to go. Yeah, you know, that, that's bringing support to the weak side. And you're going to watch. You're, you're going to watch this happen. Jermaine Phillips, a safety, is going to come up to the on the backside. Here he is right here, number 23. And with him is the linebacker, Ryan Neese. And this is a weak side blitz. And you gamble and you take your chances sometimes. You don't know whether it's going to be a run. You don't know whether it's going to be a pass. It could have been a quick hitting draw off the middle, which could have hurt them in a, in a run. But they nailed it from the backside. Three wide receivers in. Ricky Kroll is in. Colbert in motion. On third and 14. DeLone. Pressure. In trouble. Ball's not loose. And it's recovered by the Panthers. The ball was knocked out of the hands of Jake DeLome and Jordan Gross covered it up. I believe that was Simeon Rice. I believe Simeon got his hand and batted that ball from the backside. Take a look. This pocket's going to close. And there's only one man with those huge long arms. And you see him get a piece of the ball there? Actually, I believe there's that when it was. Not, here. No, no, Ellis I Wims. Ellis Wims. Watch Ellis 96. Wims got yeah. There, yeah. Second punt of the game for Jason Baker. Great defensive series for Tampa Bay. Good high punt. Mark Jones from the 35. And he's wrapped up and pushed back. Forward progress up to the 43-yard line. Field position belongs to Tampa Bay so far. These two teams met week nine in Tampa. 
And the Carolina Panthers got off to a 10-0 lead. Then Chris Sims hit Joey Galloway for the long bomb, who's 10-7. Then at 17-7, the interception and return for a touchdown by Chris Gamble helped break the game open. And then it was all Carolina, six sacks on Chris Sims as they dominated the game and blew it open and won it 34 to 14. Well, there's your number since then with the Carolina defense, and I think this is the biggest thing. We're only one touchdown given up in the last four weeks. And I don't care who you're Until today. Well, yeah, they're going to lose two now. But two tight that's ends what they've in. Been doing. That's when they really started to pick it up. That pass caught by Alex Smith, and he is pulled down by Dan Morgan, the middle linebacker. Let me, let me go back and, and say this. You saw those numbers that we talked about, okay? I, they didn't have Cadillac Williams playing at that time. And when Cadillac Williams was injured, Tampa Bay became a different team. They really couldn't do anything. And once their running game was shut down, it is the most unfair thing in the NFL is when you force a team to drop back and pass the ball. Because everybody in the stadium and on the field knows what you're going to do. And the guys up front can just come Second and eight. Speed at Straight ahead, Cadillac, Cadillac Williams gets about a yard on the play as we come down to the end of the first quarter and a good one for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're six and one this season, seven and one this season when they score first. They've scored first on the Cadillac Williams 14 yard touchdown run. End of the first quarter. Maybe I'm all, I'm all set and ready oh, to go okay. for Christmas. Good. All my Christmas shopping was done a long time ago. <laughs> Michael Pittman is in, he split out wide right. And somebody moved too soon. Adele Shepard came running across the line for Tampa Bay. And false start will set the Bucks back. Five yard five. penalty. Still third down. Sam Rosen, Bill Moss, Jay Glazer in Charlotte in the battle for first place in the NFC South. The Bucks know that if they lose this game, it will set back. Not only their chances to win the division, but perhaps their chance to make the playoffs. Yes. Ricky Manning is in as the fi fifth defensive back for Carolina. Ike Hilliard is in as the third wide receiver for the Bucks. Short drop, Sims goes outside to Hilliard. Gets to midfield where he's brought down short of the first down marker. Ken Lucas with a good tackle. And that penalty was costly. Very Adele much. Shepard not knowing the snap count, jumping off sides with a false start there. You know, that, that was a heck of a play. And Chris Sims, very impressive here early on. Very you know, poised, Bill. Play, and he feels confidence in that offensive line that really is one in which he probably shouldn't have that much confidence in. Now, they're getting some extra help with tight ends and backs staying in to help him out, but he's sitting there right in the pocket. Steve Smith is deep, second punt of the game for Josh Bidwell. This is a good line drive kick. Smith lets it bounce this time. Takes a bounce in favor of the Panthers and is down around the 15-yard line. Carolina, they'd like to roar. The Panther is ready. The offense hasn't done it yet. This sideshow Bob, will it turn into a killer vacation? Kelsey Grammer, guest stars, all new Simpsons at 8, 7 Central here on Fox. On first down, it's on Foster. Takes it wide, and not much there. Flag. Flag on the play as he picked up a yard. And we'll check out the penalty. Rondé Barber made the tackle on Deshaun Foster, and the Bucks have done a good job thus far containing Foster. He's carried nine times now. Well, if you look at it, Sam, just, just by numbers Holding alone. 95, defense. Five yards from the end of the run, automatic. First down. Chris Hovan on the defensive line. So we've seen that once on each side, the defensive holding by a defensive lineman. By numbers alone, Sam, you, you made mention of it when you talked about the importance of this game for Tampa Bay. This game means more to Tampa Bay than it does Carolina. And that's not saying, you know, one takes it more than the other. But when you are in jeopardy of missing the playoffs because of a game, it will mean more to Here's Foster following Mitchell, but a good tackle on the play by Chris Hovan. Should mention that number 91, John Bradley, second-year tackle out of Arkansas State, 
is in replacing Booger McFarland, who's out with a hamstring injury. Oh, uh, come Bradley. on. Fat guys don't have hamstrings. Yeah, don't tell that to Booger McFarland. So, Bradley, that we'll see if that becomes a problem. Bradley, the second-year man. Let's go to Jake Glazer on the sideline. Jay, what's up with Booger McFarland? Well, they're saying he's questionable to return, but he's been over here in a lot of pain. He keeps gnawing at that left hamstring with his right, with his left hand. He's obviously in a lot of discomfort, guys. Back here. On second and nine, they keep running the ball with Foster. A couple of yards. Good job inside. Crowd getting a little restless uh, about the conservative game plan uh, I by John Fox. I don't know if it's the conservative game plan they're upset with or maybe just how this team's kind of just going through the motions right now. And, I, you know, you don't like to say anything that is negative, but this isn't the team I saw play Atlanta last week. And I think it's hard to keep that emotional level week in and week out. I mean, that's that was the most difficult challenge for a player. Here's third and seven. Carry, carry, carry. Wide yeah. receivers in, empty backfield now as Foster motions. Malone steps up, there's a flag on the play. Malone runs, gets it up for the first down, but let's that see if that is brought back. Looks like it might be a holding against Carolina. And holding is one thing. Holding, 76, offense, 10-yard penalty, still third down. Tootin Reyes. And, and I think any offensive lineman will tell you this, and any offensive line coach will emphasize it. Holding is one thing. It's laziness. And if you you get lazy and, and you get into a problem and you don't do your technique properly, you're forced to use your hands to hold and drag somebody down. Ricky Prohl, who was in as the third wide receiver, limped off and is uh, limping along the sideline, just trying to walk it off. Rod Gardner has replaced him on third and 17. To get to the 31 for first down, the toss to Nick Goings. He's blocked down at the 20-yard line. Oh, that Tampa Bay defense is fired up. Listen to the crowd reaction, though, about toward the offensive play of the Carolina Panthers, but you're right. Tampa Bay defense led by their coordinator, Monty Kiffin, has come ready to play. Well, yeah, and sometimes people might say, well, you know, that's just a slogan. Well, sometimes it's the truth, too. And I can say this much about Carolina. As to this point right now in the game, this is not the team I saw play last week. I saw them, too. Uh, yeah, well, then you can agree with me. Short kick gonna... by Baker. I think any of the people viewing that are Carolina fans. So far, would you're right. Absolutely. Ball's out of bounds at the 35 yard line. The Bucks on offense when we come back to Charlotte. Last week, the Panthers' defense got the team all fired up and led them to the win. Oh, they were dominant. They, they, they just took over the game. And I've never seen a defense do what that defense did to the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, they, they shut down everybody. Crumpler, and Vic, Dunn, Duckett, everybody. Everything they tried, they just drilled them. And, and, and it, when you play like that, that's emotional. You know, that, that's what does it. They need to get some defensive plays here. Two tight ends for Tampa Bay. Look at them shifting. Three tight ends. Look at all the shifting with Carolina as well, matching up with them. Dave Moore, Alex Smith, and Anthony Beckton. Cadillac Williams going left, slipping a couple of tackles, turning it into a nice run. Up to the 44-yard line, he picked up nine on the play, make it eight-yard pickup for well, Cadillac this Williams. This is John Gruden, and this is his mastery, and this is smoke and mirrors. Watch. Number 27, Marlon McCree, is going to be right here. Now watch when they shift. He's going to come. Watch, see? He, now he comes all the way over here. Now, that's the safety. So they run to where the strong safety was. He tries to catch it from the backside. He never gets there. Seven carries, 57 yards for Cadillac Williams. Allstott turns back and gives him the signal that was called. And this time it's no gain on the play. Good play up front as with a second and short, they ran the ball. And you can see that front of Carolina coming up strong, Al Wallace and Jordan Karstens combining on the stop. Loss of a yard. Back to the 43. 
Bring up a third and three for the Bucks. Gruden's really a master of changing personnel and formations. Well, it forces you defensively to stay on top of it and change with it because they do different plays and different things and have a different offensive personality with the different guys they have. Chris Sims calls a timeout. Some confusion, and he wants to talk it over with Gruden on the sideline. Jay Glazer back in Carolina. Don't tell John Gruden about the Panthers' dominance of his Bucks over the last five games. In fact, Gruden in his meeting last night brought up other e exemplary sports figures over time who said they just didn't care going into it. For example, Sugar Ray Leonard. Guys, do you think that he cared going against Marvin Hagler, the biggest, baddest guy in that division at that time? No, you guys got to do the same thing. We're good enough. We have great players in here. I don't want to hear about their excellence. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jay. Now on third and three, he doesn't four have to wide hear about receiver, it. Yeah, four wide receivers. He doesn't have to believe in it. Michael Pittman in the backfield. The fact of the matter is, it's there. Six defensive backs for Carolina. Sims throws and completes to nice. Hendrick. First down up at the 47-yard line. And, I, and I, I like what they're doing here in, 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 with Tampa Bay. I like their offensive philosophy. I like the fact that they put the game in the hands of the young quarterback, Chris Sims. And, and he's responded. He is throwing an accurate ball. When Brian Greasy went down, Chris Sims came in, played a bad game in San Francisco. Then his second start was against Carolina. Didn't play all that bad, but he admits made a bad mistake when he threw the interception early in the second half and the game turned. Since then, he's been very, very good over the last four games. Right now, seven for nine, 51 yards. He throws here and completes to Pittman. At the 46, he's using everybody right now. Will Witherspoon with a tackle. So on the first down, he picks up seven with a Shifting short pass. Shifting and motion and confusion, and Carolina is trying to keep pace with it by all the moving all across the field. Look at this, number 84 is right here. That's Galloway. See all the shifting in motion? These guys are shifting around. Now, here comes Galloway, and he's going to clear out that side over here, and then Pittman is going to come underneath. On second and three, Beck, the tight end in motion. And it's Cadillac Williams. And he's got enough for the first down, the 42-yard line. Thus far, a very, very solid game plan offensively for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, I, 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 I got to tell you, I guarantee you, Carolina defensively right now is reeling a little bit. And this is not the Carolina Panthers we saw last week. This certainly isn't the Carolina Panthers we saw play Tampa Bay down in Tampa Bay. Right. And the game plan and the philosophy of the Tampa Bay's offense is what has changed that. Allstott and Williams in the backfield. Everybody out. Sims lofts it for Galloway too far. He was well covered on the play. Mike Minter had him deep. Ken Lucas had well, him short. That was, a, that was a poorly thrown ball. And the reason it was poorly thrown is because of one. That's not Dan Morgan. I got the wrong guy. Julius Peppers. Take a look at him and watch, watch him. He gets the move outside, inside. It comes right underneath. And he gets right up in the face of Chris Sims. Kenyatta Walker has had a tough time historically every time he's seen Pepper. Ricky Manning in as a fifth defensive back. Three wide receivers for Tampa Bay and Williams carries and Dan Morgan wraps him up. Williams fights his way down to the 39 yard line. That quick move outside and underneath Peppers has. Watch this. The one we just saw good for that rush. He used it again against Kenyatta Walker the first time they saw it this year. He, Kenyatta Walker's had two, three first starts on him on one drive. Three. Then that move right there is what Chris Sims just got. The outside, then underneath. And again. And he's just got, he's just too powerful and explosive for Walker to handle one-on-one. -on -one. But today, he's done a good job. No sacks on Sims so far. Here comes Peppers this Knock time. On wood. And they got him. Sam. Oh, I opened my mouth Sam. too soon. There came Julius Peppers and Kendall Moorhead and the first sack of the game. <laughs> and no sooner did you say that, and it was there. And, and, and the big thing is because of the down and distance. When you're fourth and 11, 
you can bring the house. And, and, and for defensive linemen, did you see how quick you got around Kenyatta Walker? Shiminy Christmas. You can bring the house. And, and for defensive linemen, Sam, you're one-dimensional. You're one-minded. You're not thinking anything else but getting off that ball and getting to the quarterback. Chris Gamble is deep for Carolina. Low snap. And a good job by Bidwell to get it away. Angling toward the corner, but it goes into the end zone instead for a touchback. 44-yard punt, but a net of 24 on the touchback. Chris Julius Sims. Peppers, they need to get him going. Chris, he is going. On he is going. Chris Sims called him the best defensive end in the game of football, period. A look at the NFC. Six teams make the playoffs. You see the division leaders, Seattle, Chicago, Carolina, and the Giants. Tampa Bay right behind. Dallas, Atlanta, Minnesota, and Washington is 6-6. Six and six. Minnesota's won five in a row. They're leading at home, 7-3 over the Rams. Chicago, winners of eight in a row, trailing in Pittsburgh, 7-3. Deshaun Foster on first down gets a couple of yards before he stopped Chris Hovan. Made the stop in Hovan after five years in Minnesota. Coming to Tampa where they told him, you're going to be the nose tackle. If that's okay with you, we're, we want you to come play for us. He said, I just want to play, and he's done a good job. Gone is the long hair, and he's all trimmed up, literally, because he's lost some weight, too. And, and being a nose tackle is not what he was in Minnesota. He was the three technique, which Booger McFarland plays here. Hang him in motion. The long to put it up. Just missed, and he throws it, completes to Mangum. The tight end up to the 38-yard line. Well-thrown pass, and Mangum gets fired up. A 14-yard pickup. He is fired up, and he's trying to fire. Did you see the gesture he made? He made it towards his own bench. Guys know. When you play, you know. You know when you're flat and when you're pumped up. And, and that he made that gesture, slamming the football. Watch, he gets up and looks to his bench. That's his bench he's looking at. He wants to get them going. From the 38. Mangum again in motion. Off the play fake, the long looking with time, short to Mangum, he dives, he's got it. Short pick up up to the 40 yard line. Ryan Neese and Rondé Barber were there for Tampa Bay. Mangum extra important today with Michael Gaines out of the lineup. He was injured last week. One of three like Panthers him. who suffered ankle injuries. I like Mangum. Mangum, said he's a player. Yeah, well, he does whatever he's asked to do. And that could be a variety of things. You know, an H-back, full-back, tight end, whatever they ask him to do during the week, and it changes every week. That's what he'll emphasize. On second and eight, Seidman has replaced Mangum, motions. And Delon will put it up again. Gets time, lofts it deep. One-on-one -on -one battle, and it's incomplete. Ryan Kelly with outstanding coverage on Steve Smith. He's the best cover man they have, and Kelly covering the best receiver of the Panthers. Yeah, and, and look at this. This is an outstanding job. The ball is thrown long. Steven Smith adjusts to it. Steve Smith adjusts to it. And Kelly, look at him. That's perfect position. Ball a little underthrown. Ricky, there's a look at Brian Kelly. Ricky Prohl, who injured his ankle earlier, is back in. Jake DeLone, 5 for 8, 42 yards. Third and long, third and eight. Empty backfield. Here comes pressure. DeLone moves and throws. And it's incomplete. And Steve good. Smith took a big hit. That didn't feel good. Will Allen with the hit. And Smith is slow to get up. Derek Brooks had the underneath coverage. Allen came in and slammed Smith as he reached for the ball. And this doesn't look good at all for the Panthers. You know, what you know, What was amazing to me is it, 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 it looked to me like an unprotected player. You know, that's a receiver, and watch the helmet. Uh, he used his shoulder. Left shoulder. It was his shoulder. Take another that's a heck look. of a hit. Yeah. You know, the thing about it is, that's what Steve Smith does, though. He'll go across the middle and take hits like that. 
Steve Smith walked off under his own power. One thing's for sure, he got the wind knocked out of him, and, and I'm sure some of the bones were rattling as well. That's a violent hit. I'm telling you, that was, that will change your thoughts of going across the middle. You know, you, you, know, you know what you see, you've heard of alligator arms and people, the receivers that go across the middle. That's why, if you take one of those, it can change your personality as a receiver about what you do in there. Jason Baker, his fifth punt of the game, excuse me, his fourth. This one is a good high kick. Mark Jones takes it, juggles it, and returns. Slips a couple of tackles, turns it into a big gator. Can he beat Baker? Baker oh, tripped him up. No. The punter saved a touchdown. No. Say it isn't so. What a return by Mark Jones, who juggled the ball Jason and returned it Baker. 31 yards. You know what? When you go in the next day in the film room, you go in, you watch the film with all your teammates and stuff, the guys will be ripping on Mark Jones. Look they the will. Moves. Oh, they're great. But they're going to tell him, look, you had four blockers out in front of you, and you got tackled by a punter? Oh, they will. They'll laugh at him about it. They'll be great. Four blockers out in front of you with nothing but green from here to the end zone, and the punter gets you. But a heck of a return for Mark Jones, his longest of the season. And a heck of a job by him, too. Like, Baker, Baker, oh, without a doubt. And his if he teammates didn't make, know it. His teammates make, know it. If he didn't make that tackle, mm -hmm. that was seven. From the 39. Beck, the tight end in motion. Cadillac Williams cuts it back, and he's brought down by Brandon Short as he crosses the 40-yard line. Carolina on offense, five possessions. Their first one was important. They missed a field goal of 42 yards. The last four have ended in punts. Their offense has not gotten going at all. Well, I, I got to tell you this much, too. I, they've been fortunate because I think there's been a couple times Tampa Bay has the opportunity to score. That punt return being one of them. And when this game goes to a two-score game, that's when it changes. On second and eight, good play fake by Sims. He throws and completes to Alex Smith, who's upended by Ken Lucas. Lucas has been a good tackler today for Carolina. I like this kid, Alex Smith. Uh, third round draft pick out of Stanford. Bright kid, he's got his degree in economics. And he's a good receiver. Oh, he's a good everything. You know, he's asked to do something that physically is a challenge for him in blocking. When you're about 255 pounds and you're a rookie in this league and you've got to go against some defensive ends and block one outside linebackers, it becomes difficult at times. But he's a worker and he's only going to get bigger and stronger and better at what he's doing. On third and one, Todd Stussy is in as an eligible. Allstott and Jameel Cook in the backfield. And it's Allstott diving. Did he get enough? He I, is very close so. to the line. I believe he got it. The spot will be key. You see the green line here on your television set at home. Let's take a look at where the official is going to spot that ball down. Right on the line, they will probably bring out the chains for a measurement. They can bring it out. I think that's pretty good, though. They went with the... Uh, the big boys, a couple of tight ends. Todd Stussy came in as a third well, tight end. I, and, and you know something, Sam? That's starting to say something. You know, they're, they're feeling a little bit of success against this Carolina defense that dominated them when they played them last time in Tampa Bay. If you remember earlier in the game, it was third and two, and we had a third and one, and both those times they passed the ball. Well, now they're feeling a little bit better, like they're getting a little bit of confidence about them to line up with the big boys and make a statement. First down on the 49, they come out with three wide receivers. Ike Hilliard is the third, along with Joey Galloway and Michael Clayton. Hilliard in motion. Short drop out to Hilliard. He's got it, and Kenny Lucas takes him down. Lucas having a strong game. How'd that feel? Catch the ball, turn around, have a guy rip your head off. <laughs> huh? Two-yard gain on the play. That's not fun. You know, I think I think people, fans, take for granted sometimes, Sam, some of the things that you see week in and week out, you know, like that hit, hit on Steve Smith. 
Oh, he got up and walked off the field under his own power. He's all right. You know, easy for you to say. Two tight ends in. They get two wide receivers, two backs. One tight is Anthony back. Sims, and they stop the play. That's something happened with the clock here. We may have gotten the two-minute warning yeah, before they got yeah. the snap off. We've reached the two-minute warning. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a 7-0 lead. Good field position as we're late in the half. You, they're looking for some kind of emotion, Carolina is. There's Baker who made the tackle. Look at Carl Hankin, the special teams captain. He appreciates it. I'd like to translate get, and tell get, you in a nice way what he told him, but you can get the sense. Got to get the rest of the guys going on the same page. I, I, think, you know, I think there's a few guys that are trying to pick him up. Sims straight back with a deep drop. Plenty of time. Throws short to Joey Galloway. And he's got it at the 47-yard line. The catch was Cadillac Williams out of the backfield. My apologies. It brings up a third and long. You see the numbers. A very efficient Tampa Bay offense on third down when Brian Gracie was in. Not as good with Chris Sims. Better today, four for seven on third down conversion. I don't know if all of that has to do with just the quarterback position. Pittman in the backfield, three wide receivers. Blitz. Sims with time, throws to Hilliard for a first down. Good throw, good catch, and out of bounds just short of the 40-yard line. Fourth catch of the game for Ike Hilliard. Checked it. I want, I want you to watch this closely here. You're going to have Ken Lucas blitz from this side. He's going to be coming from right here. Uh -oh. From right here, he's going to be coming. Now, Preston Buckner, on the other hand, he's going to be right here. Watch him drop. See him drop? And they throw the ball to where the blitzer came, the side to where the blitzer came. That was a nice pickup, nice adjustment by the offensive line in Tampa Bay. Two tight ends, two wides, everybody out. Sims throws short to Alex Smith, and he's tripped up. As he got across the 40 to the 38, once again, it's Ken Lucas on the tackle. Yeah, he's been all over the place, hasn't he? And yes, he has. Sims calls timeout to go to the sideline. Little over a minute to go in the first half. Bucks want to get into scoring position. J.B. Terry Howie and Jimmy standing by in the studio with a Visa halftime report. Brad Johnson leading Minnesota. They're up at half in the first half. Ben Roethlisberger in Pittsburgh leading. And Marvin Harrison leading Indianapolis in Jacksonville. With two touchdowns and 110 yards in the first half. Woo! He leads the NFL in touchdown receptions. Three wide receivers, Michael Pittman in the backfield on second down. Sims throws out of the hands of Joey Galloway. He usually doesn't drop those. No. That'll bring up a third and long. No, that's a little un uncharacteristic yep. of him. That's Brian Greasy. And when Chris Sims came to the sideline moments ago, he went over, tapped him on the head, gave him a congratulations. Brian Greasy out for the remainder of the season on IR after suffering an ACL injury, ninth play of the drive now for the Bucks. They need a first down here to get in the scoring position. Sims with time, complete, good catch by Clayton. He has held on. He's got a first down at the 26-yard line. He juggled it and pulled it in. Important catch for Michael Clayton, a pickup of 12 <laughs> is, on the play. This is fantastic, the game plan that the Tampa Bay Bucks have come into this game with, as now they're going hurry up offense. Three wide receivers. Sims, time again. Michael Pittman out of bounds inside the 20, close to the 17 yard line. Remember what I mentioned about these two style teams and going up by two scores. Whether they get a touchdown here or a field goal, whichever it is, if they score here before the half and go up by two scores, a couple things happen. Historically through the NFL, the team leading at halftime goes on to win. The second thing is when you go up on one team by more than two scores, the other team has to play catch up. And that means throw the football. 
And if you're going to drop back and pass and face Simeon Racing Company, good luck to you. Second and one. They hand it off to Pittman. Kemp Rasmussen makes the stop at the 16-yard line. He looks like he's got enough for the first down. The Bucks have one timeout remaining. These teams are built, these two teams in particular, are built to get a lead with their offense. They let the clock wind down. They're going to call timeout and send the field goal yeah. kicking unit on. But these two teams are built similar. Get, get a lead, score some points, and then turn that defensive line loose on the opponents. Matt Bryant will attempt the field goal and uh, looking to give the Bucks a 10-point halftime lead. They have played an outstanding game, both sides of the ball. Good protection for Chris Sims. He's been effective and been able to throw. Here's Bryant, 34-yard attempt. Josh Bidwell, the holder. Dave Moore, the long snapper. Kick is through. Matt Bryant, 16 for 19 this season. Halftime in Carolina. And the visitors, the second place, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With a 10-0 lead. They scored a touchdown on Carolina. They add the field goal, 10-0 at the half. Welcome back to Charlotte. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a 10-0 lead on the Carolina Panthers as we are moments away from the start of the second half. Earlier this week, the NFL family lost a great one. Bud Carson was the man who helped build the steel curtain defense in Pittsburgh. He was one of the great innovators and masters of defense in the NFL for several teams. He was a head coach for a while in the NFL, and this week he passed away. We all mourn his passing, Bud Carson leaving us at the age of 75, and really uh, one of the master innovators, I thought, Bill, in defense. He was my first defensive coordinator when I came into the league, and I uh, got a special bond with him. I had for a long time, and Bud Carson's, it, it was the originator of what everybody in the NFL nowadays calls Tampa 2. They think Tony Dungy built that defense down in Tampa, and everybody's copied it. Actually, when Tony Dungy was a player, it was under Bud Carson for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's where he got his ideas for his defense. Now, to this game, Carolina Panthers are down 10 nothing at halftime. They've got to find a way to turn things around offensively. What do they do? Well, offensively, they've got to put some points on the board. They've got to get that running game going a little bit, and they've got to make big plays in the passing game. Emotion is a big factor. I think we've identified that and talked about that. I would have liked to have seen John Fox at halftime. I'm sure he went off. And the other thing is, defensively, I think they have them figured out right now. I think, I think they have them figured out as to all the shifting and motioning that Tampa was doing offensively. I think they've simplified it. I don't think you're going to see Carolina's defense shifting with Tampa Bay anymore. I think they're going to find a way to simplify it and get after them more. Panthers will kick off. John Casey gets ready. Adele Shepard is deep. Low line drive bouncer. Shepard takes it at the 16. Brings it across the 30 and up close to the 34. Kemp Rasmussen was there along with Chris Draft. Let's go to the sideline to Jay Glazer. Jay, what do you got? Well, guys, you knew this game was going to be a slugfest going into it. And I asked John Gruden, as Billy said in the first half, how important was it that you came out with two scores early on? He said, Jay, this is one of the greatest days of my life. So even though up 10 nothing, John Gruden still not a happy camper. Back to you guys. Not happy until he wins. But he's, his team has been prepared. They have certainly made adjustments from the first meeting. And Chris Sims, you can see him growing. Look at the numbers. 15 for 19, 98 yards. And flags fly. Chris Sims has thrown only one interception Ball in start. the last. 72, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. False start against Tampa Bay. Sims only one interception thrown in the last five games, including this one, in the last 118 passes. Hey, if John Gruden wasn't having a good day now, 
putting him at first and 15, it's not going to make yeah. that day much better. Two tight ends, two backs, one wide receiver. Cadillac Williams carries up to the 30-yard line. Pick up of about a yard on the play. Cadillac Williams, 11 carries, 39 yards in the first half. The big carry, the 14-yard touchdown run. Panthers bring in five wide receivers as Ricky Manning comes on the field. Brandon Short goes off. Have to get to the 44 for first down. Mike Hilliard is in as a third wide receiver. Clayton in motion and Allstott shifts outside. Sims to Allstott through his hands, incomplete. Usually a very reliable receiver out of the backfield, the veteran Mike Allstott, who's had a strong year. Well, th that pass right there, believe it or not, it's a very, very difficult pass to catch. Because it's, it's flat. You're running flat towards the sidelines, and you're looking back to the receiver, to the quarterback at the ball, and he's throwing it flat out in front of you. It's difficult. Doesn't look difficult, but again, it's one of those things I talk about, what we get accustomed to seeing. Pittman and Allstott in the backfield. Sims barking the signals. Throws the screen to Pittman, and he's wrapped up from behind. Good tackle by Al Wallace. And on the first series of the second half, the Carolina Panthers forced the Bucks to punt. That's what they needed. That's what they wanted, and I'm, I'm certain that's what they talked about at halftime. Hey, guys, defense is up first. This is what we need to do. We need three and out. I'm pretending I'm John Fox. We need three and out, make them punt, and change the field. And offense, we've got to go down and score immediately. That's a pretty good imitation of John Fox. Well, Josh Bidwell with a punt way up in the air. Good one. Chris Gamble waits at the 18 on the return to the sideline. He's hit by Jameel Cook, and then he's buried at the 26-yard line. Now the Panthers will try to get their offense going. 48-yard punt by Bidwell, 8-yard return. Some misses in this game. Some pretty good defense played. Ellis Wims is in a defensive tackle, replacing Booger McFarland. Delome on first down. Wanted to go short, incomplete, intended for Steve Smith. Once again, good coverage and some pressure on Jake Delome. Ryan Neese had Smith covered. Steve Smith, who came into the game leading the NFL in receiving yardage and tied for most receptions with 82. Has caught only two balls in the game. Hoover and Deshaun Foster in the backfield. And Mangum with tight end motions. Hello, with time, goes short to Deshaun Foster. Hit hard by Jermaine Phillips. Up at the 33-yard line, a couple of yards short of the first down. Jermaine Phillips has had a couple big hits today, hasn't he? Yes, he has. On Steve Smith. Earlier. Foster comes out. And Stephen Davis is in on the lineup for the first time of the game. Phillips sent Steve Smith to the sideline. He returned. Foster goes to the sideline. Davis in on third and two. The toss to Davis. Follows Hoover and Wall. First down. Whoa. Look at that run by Davis. He looked pretty fresh there into Tampa Bay territory to the 48. I thought he couldn't run anymore. 20-yard <laughs> run that time. <laughs> Had the longest run of the day. Nice play. Look how they crashed inside. They were overloaded to that side, Tampa Bay was, and they all crashed inside. That means you're taking your first step down inside. Well, when the Carolinas' offensive line was taking their first step to the outside of them, you can see where the natural wall was created. Two tight ends in, Mangum and Seidman for Carolina. Mangum motions. Off 
the play fake. DeLome, pressure. Flushed out of the pocket, he throws, and a diving nope. attempt, but it's incomplete. Good effort by Chris Mangum. Deshaun Foster on the sideline. It was Brad Hoover, the intended yep, yep, receiver, yep, yep. downfield. Ooh, there's that hit by Phillips on Foster. <laughs> hey. He's still feeling it. Phillips has some 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 hit in him, doesn't he? He's got a little woo in him. A little Foster woo. Looks like he's got himself collected and ready to come back. Three wide receivers, Ricky Kroll in. Nick Goings in the backfield on second and ten. Long swings it out to Goings. And he's down at the 44-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Brian Kelly with a tackle. That that little toss to Stephen Davis, that, that was huge. That really was. This drive is very, very important for Carolina to get back in this game. Their defense set the standard. They've got a nice drive going. Davis kept it alive. And they've got to get something done here. And they do. They're one for six on third downs from the 44. Mangum, the tight end, is split out. And motions now. Three wide receivers in. Simeon Rice came across. And they stopped the play. And it's going to be unabated. Offside, 97. Defense, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Bring up a third and short now. Take a listen. This is DeLome on a hard count. Look at DeLome and watch him emphasize that first hut. That emphasis, you heard it right there. That emphasis right there was enough for a free five yards to make Simeon Rice jump off sides. There's third and two at the 39. Hoover gets the toss to Davis. With a couple of blockers, but what a tackle on the play. Short of the first down, Chris Hovan. He really stuck it to Stephen Davis and stopped him just as he was picking up some motion. I'll tell you what, you know, look at Tampa Bay. Watch. They're all coming this way. As if, as if they knew what the play was going to be. And when you study enough film and you see the personnel in the, on third down, you get a pretty good idea by formation what play is going to be run. John they Fox have that one. going for it on fourth down. They're only two for four this season on fourth down conversions. Hoover and Davis in the backfield. They need a yard. It's Davis bouncing off the pile, and I don't think he made it. Greg Spires with a tackle and a great job by the front of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Their defense has been strong. That hurt. That hurt bad. This is why Deshaun Foster is the starter, because Stephen Davis, well, I want to take a look. Here's a hole right here. You see that hole? Now watch where he runs. Right into the back of his offensive lineman. That, that, that was costly. Buck start from the 38. Got like Williams wrapped up in the backfield. Brenson Buckner with great penetration. Big buff. Stops him short of the line of scrimmage. What a character. Brenson Buckner, isn't he? Buckner, who came from San Francisco. He's been all over the place. But it's really come into his own in the last few years here in Carolina. When he got here, John Fox promised him they'd build the defense around the defensive line. They brought in Julius Peppers, brought in Al Wallace. Rucker was here. That pass by Sims intended Galloway for drops. Joey Galloway is incomplete. Boy, there's been a bunch of drops. You know, that disconnected. There, right. it, it's there again. What was that group? Cowboy Mouth? Cowboy Mouth. Yeah. I've heard that in a, in a few places. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, you just went up a couple levels in my book. <laughs> Kendall Moorhead in a defensive tackle for Carolina on third and 11. Fans getting loud, urging on the Panthers defense. Sims gets good protection. Throws to Hilliard, slips one man. 
and gets a first down. A big hit by Minter, but not before Ike Hilliard got to the 49. 12 yard gain. Fifth catch of the game for Ike Hilliard. Ricky Manning missed a tackle early. Look at the time the quarterback had. Look at Alex Smith. Alex Smith, here's Julius Peppers right here, okay? Watch Alex Smith, that's a tight end. He jams him at the line of scrimmage, then shoves him back. That's a rookie that weighs 255 pounds. I've never seen anybody do that to Julius Peppers. Wow. That's, that's, that is as impressive, impressive as I've seen by a young kid in this league. You saw what Julius Peppers did to Big Kenyatta Walker. Heck, just put the tight end Alex Smith on him. Alex Smith, a third round pick out of Stanford. When he was at Stanford, had the opportunity to meet and talk to Bill Walsh. And Walsh taught him some few thing, a few things about the West Coast offense that he feels has really helped him adapt to the NFL. He must have teach him how to pass block too. <laughs> That's right. Play fake by Sims and he rolls. Throws short to Allstad out of the backfield and a nice pickup of eight on the first down. Chris Sims, 18 for 24 in the game. Five of the six incompletions have been drops. He is having yeah. himself a fine, fine game. There was only one time I can remember him really being inaccurate, and that's when he had a pass rush in his face. That's when Julius Peppers was right in his grill and he was throwing off his back foot. That's the only time today that I can remember his ball not being right on target. He's been sacked once in the game. Second and two. And it's Cadillac Williams. Dan Morgan wraps him up, but Williams got enough for the first down. And his feet just keep on chugging. Cadillac Williams is very impressive to me because a lot of young guys come in this league and don't have all the things that he has from the neck up. I'm not talking about his physical attributes. This guy, he, he thinks he belongs here. He thinks he can excel here. He wasn't intimidated, scared, naive about anything the NFL came with. He came in from the day he's been in this league, has brought it to the opponents. Smith, the second tight end, splits out wide left. Two tights, two backs, one wide receiver. Williams cuts it back. Nice gain. On first down, he's got close to 10. Cadillac Williams, strong effort. Brandon Short with the stop, a nine-yard gain. Williams, who got off to the great start, a record-setting start, his first three games. This should be coming right at you. Low end zone view. Watch the knees of Cadillac Williams. Watch him. They just keep – now he gets in traffic. Watch him. They pick up a pace. They're still going. He gets tackled, and he still keeps those knees. They're like pistons in an engine. They just keep going up and down. This guy is relentless. Second and one. Again, two tight ends, two backs. And it's Williams for the first down. Down to the 28-yard line. 16 carries in the game for Cadillac Williams. Eight men in the box. Take a look here. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth was right here. Okay? Now watch. Now watch this. See, there's the eighth. Now they get back out of it with a dummy audible, and they take the eighth man out of the box. There's a lot of dummy audio audibles being used by Tampa Bay to try to get Carolina's defense in and out of different fronts. Panthers bring in a fourth linebacker, Chris Draft. They go 4-4 four, four and three defensive backs. Williams carries. And he's got a nice pickup down to the 23-yard line as the Bucks continue to run the ball. Cadillac Williams in the first three games of the season, set a record for most yards rushing by a rookie. Then he had a drop off. There was an injury, he missed the game, and the numbers dropped off. Last four games now, he is back to where he was early in the season. You know, there, there's a couple acts out there. There's yak, which is yards after contact. There's rack, which is run after catch. I'd like to know Cadillac Williams' yards after contact today. Cadillac slips one man, gets inside the 20-yard line. There was four right there, four yards right there after initial contact. And if you remember, Sam, on their opening drive on the touchdown, okay, he got contact in the backfield from Will Weatherspoon, but broke that tackle and took it into the end zone. All day long, it seems that Carolina has been there, made contact with him, and then he just kept churning his feet for a few more. 
On third and one, number 75, Todd Stussy, a tackle is in as an eligible. 24 yards after All contact. Allstott and Cook in the backfield. Timeout. Carolina did not like the look they got. They called a timeout. The defense needs to talk it over on a big play coming up. To sustain drives and maintain possession of the ball, you've got to convert on third down. And today, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Chris Sims have converted seven of 11 third down tries. They've done it through the air, and when they've gone to the ground, they've been effective as well. Now they have a third and one, two tight ends. Todd Stucey, an eligible third tight end, and the heavy load in the backfield. Allstein dives on top. Where will they mark his forward progress? He went airborne. He may be a little short. I thought we were at a rager, and he was body surfing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him? They are just passing him along the top. Mosh pit. That was great. The spot. Hey, the guy got some leaps. a little you know? short. Yeah, he went, he he went airborne. Has. If you ever saw the size of his calves, you'd understand why that guy can jump so high. You know, he's always going up and over one of those. If it gets clogged down there, he's going right over the top. You're bringing the chains out for the official measurement. How about a little that? more than the length of the football. So the field goal kicking unit comes I, out. You know, I thought the, his initial extension of the ball Right there, he's over. I thought it, that, that was good enough. Where the ball is, remember, Bill. Look, look, where the ball is. And I think the, the Panthers did a great job. What a hit right uh, there. I think it's a good set. Then that's a great picture Chris because Graham. you can see the first down marker in the background of that and where he was. That was, that was a great picture. Chris Draft with the hit. Give it up for Carolina. Right. Bryant is setting up and finding a spot. It'll be a 36-yard try. Bryant made one of 34 earlier, 16 for 19 this season. Josh Bidwell, the holder. And the Bucks have a 13-point uh -huh. lead. Bryant is perfect. Good try by Allstott. He was stopped, and the Bucks settled for three. Carolina Panthers have to find a way to get back. Their offense has stalled. They had one attempted field goal early after their first possession. And they missed a 42-yard field goal try. And since then, it's been the Tampa Bay defense, which has been dominant. Matt Bryant to kick off. A line drive kick. Rod Spart at the 8. Drops the ball. And he's brought down just as he crossed the 20-yard line by Barrett Rude. JB has got a game break for us. Take it away, JB. Hey, Sam, the kid from Harvard, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Takes it himself, 14 yards to pay dirt to tie it up against Minnesota, 13 all. But the Vikings answer back. Michael Bennett capping a five-play, 80-yard drive to go ahead, 2013. Sam, thanks for asking about the Tomatoes. Despite the century to Terry Bradshaw, they are good and they're working. Back to Sam Rosen. I know you love him, JB. Thanks, buddy. So Ryan Fitzpatrick, we've got our own guy from Harvard, Tom Yoey who was a fine quarterback at Harvard. Below on first down. Great grab by Steve Smith. He may go. They angle down toward him. Smith is pushed out of bounds by Jermaine Phillips. At the 19-yard line. Big play for the Carolina Panthers. Gets their offense some life. A 60-yard gain. Heck, it gave this stadium some life. Everybody came off their feet on that one. What a grab by Steve Smith. In the midst of traffic, he comes out of there with the ball inbounds and was on his way to the house, but watch the angle by Jermaine Phillips. That's a heck of a grab right over top of Dexter Jackson. 
fifth reception this year for over 50 yards by Steve Smith. He leads the NFL. And a flag as they stop the play. False start against Carolina. One step forward. False start. 86 offense. One step Five yard back. penalty. Still first down. Chris Mangum, the tight end, the false start. You saw Deshaun Foster back in the lineup at running back for Carolina after he was shaken up, taking a hard hit from Jermaine Phillips. Ball back at the 24 yard line. Foster and Hoover in the backfield, two tight ends, and Steve Smith, the game breaker that we talked about. And Carolina needs him. Angle motions. Foster behind Hoover. It's down to the 22. He picked up four on the two on the play. We'll go down to Jay Glazer on the sideline. Jay. Guys, you saw Dexter Jackson make a very costly gamble there on Steve Smith. Ironically, before the game, I asked Dexter, what's the main thing you have to worry about with Smith? He said yards after the catch. He's going to catch his passes, but you cannot make him go out and break out after he gets the ball in his hands. Guys, he didn't listen to his own advice. Back yeah. to you. He took the chance and he missed. Well, funny thing is, sometimes when you see that ball right there, you know, you just can't help but make the, try to make the play on it. Two Hoover motions on second down. DeLone rolls, throws to Foster, right up on him is Brian Kelly. And an extra hit from Ryan Neese. Fans wanted a flag on the play. Let's see what's going on between Chicago and Pittsburgh. Back to JB. Hey, Sam, Tomato Man back at you. Take a look at Jerome Bettis. You saw the feature on him watching. Wow, running over Mike Green to free safety. Then Brian Erlacher. You know what? It may take him a while to get cranked up during the week, but boy, is he ready and rolling. 21-3, Steelers over the Bears. Back to Sam Rose. You know, the thing about it is, if you hang out with Jay Glazer all week long, you know, you can't help but get pumped up. <laughs> The little guy just has a fireball attitude about it. He helped bet his three wide receivers for Carolina on third down. DeLone runs for it, slides to the 21. Derek Brooks was right there. And the field goal kicking unit will come on for Carolina. So after the big play to Smith, you know. the offense stalls. And the penalty was costly. Yeah, it sure was. A false start on first down. And that's and that's some of it, Sam. And, you know, there are some guys that are, are trying to help pull the team out of that emotional hangover. I like to call it. And I've, I, I know, I've been there. That it, you play an emotional game like you did last week against Atlanta, it takes a long time to get the juices back flowing. Panthers need Casey right here, and he puts it through. Carolina gets on the board. It's 13 to three, Tampa Bay. Adell Shepard deep for Tampa Bay. It's interesting, Bill. You get the NFL stats and you look through and you look. There's a page there that says last return, kickoff return for a touchdown. You get down to Tampa Bay and it's written in big capital letters. Never. Never. That's strange. Never had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Well, let's hope that holds true with your saying about what you said about no sacks for Carolina. That's what the Bucks are hoping. Casey, line drive, end over end, rolls down, and here comes Shepard. And a good tackle on the play. Sean Tufts, a backup linebacker, took him down. The closest that Tampa Bay ever came to a kickoff return for a touchdown, that's Aaron Stecker. Almost tackled there, stayed on his feet, broke a couple of tackles. Against the New Orleans Saints, December 23rd, 2001, but he was caught from behind an 86-yard return. Some things just aren't meant to be, you know? <laughs> now the Bucks start from the 23. With three, wide, uh, three tight ends in, Dave Moore, Alex Smith, and Anthony Beck. Cadillac Williams wants to go outside. Flag on the play. He's tripped up as he crossed the 25-yard line. We'll check out the flag. Kenny Lucas made the tackle. He's had a strong game. Looked like he was shaking up a little bit on the play. Oh, 
Holding, 99, defense. Five-yard penalty, he got automatic, again. first down. Second holding call on the defensive lineman, Brenson Buckner. It's the third defensive holding call in this game, and that's rare. That's very rare. You rarely ever hear that call in the NFL. Here's 99 again. This is going to be Buckner right there. See him? Uh, and it's clearly holding. <laughs> he, he's... <laughs> That is hilarious. That, that, that I'm telling you, he had he had Dan Benning right there just by the collar. Ricky Manning has replaced oh, Ted oh, Lucas. Oh, Lucas oh, down on one knee along the sideline being checked out. Michael Pittman has split out. Now he goes in motion and the toss is to Williams. Cuts it back and gets up to the 35-yard line, pickup of five, maybe four on the play. Mike Minter made the tackle. Time winding down in this third quarter. The Bucks and Carolina each scoring three points. The three points for Tampa Bay, the first points that Carolina has given up in the third quarter in the last six games. Tough defensive struggle here in the battle for first place in the NFC South. If Tampa Bay wins, They'll be on top by virtue of a better division record than Carolina. Carolina wins. They'll be on top by a couple of games. Sims throws short to Galloway. And right there is Chris Draft at the 39-yard line to make the stop as we come to the end of the third quarter. Each team with a field goal in the third quarter. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Trying to grab hold of first place, lead the Carolina Panthers 13 to three. Sam Rosen, Bill Moss, Jay Glazer here in Charlotte where the Carolina Panthers have a long way to come back. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are seven and zero this season when they lead going into the fourth quarter. Is that her? Ken, Luca Ken Lucas is back. In at cornerback for Carolina. Ike Hilliard on as a third wide receiver. On third and three. Sims short drop oh. pass batted down Pe by Julius Peppers. Making his presence felt. He limps a little bit on that sore ankle that he injured last week. Watch, he does it again. Right over Kenyatta Walker. Here's Walker right here. And here's Pep. Oh, Walker blocked down, didn't he? Yes. So they left him one-on-one -on -one back there with maybe the back sliding to his side. Fifth punt of the game for Josh Bidwell. Kept the streak going. He's had at least one 50-yard punt in 14 consecutive games going back to last season. Line drive kick. Steve Smith at the 22. Avoids one man. Breaks it upfield. Good return. Stays on his feet. Outstanding return by Smith. He's forced out of bounds at the 35-yard line. He's given him life. Twice now he's given Carolina life. He can beat you in many, many ways, and that's one of them. Now for the Panthers, they need to turn it into something. 45-yard return for Steve Smith. John Fox tell, asking, are you okay? Are you okay? Then let's go. See, after that long run, John Fox was looking out at him saying, are you okay? That's a lot of energy it takes to run that far and use that many moves. Look at him. He's all over the place. Officially a 44-yard return, the longest of the season. Longest punt return of the season for 40, Steve Smith. 44 yards down the field. But the way Steve Smith just ran that, it was more along the lines of 60. Left and right and stop and go and all over the place. That exerts a lot of energy. You saw John Fox. Are you okay? Are you okay? All right, let's go. Keeps him in the game, and now you can call your plays differently when Smith is out there. Well, now they've got to turn it into something as they have the short field starting at the Bucks 35 yard line. DeLone with time outside of Brad Hoover. Brian Kelly with the first hit, and he's brought down at the 32 three yard pickup. Yeah, you know, I, I got to tell you that. What I talked about at halftime is what John Fox was thinking and what happened at halftime in their locker room. Because Carolina's defense has come out and played different this second half than they played the first half. I think that's glaring. You can see the effect and the dominance they've had. And also, I, you know, Steve Smith has made things happen and given this team a chance. Carolina has been a 
strong fourth quarter team this season. Galone, pressure. Rolls and throws and completes to Smith. Inside the 20. Down at the 19 yard line. It's a first down. DeLone bought some time and picked up 14 yards on the hookup to Smith, who needs a rest. You know, each team has different scramble rules. And for some, it's get deep, get in the end zone. As soon as Steven Smith, Steve Smith sees him right there scrambling, he works his way back and finds an opening to DeLone. And, 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 and that's important because, you know, DeLone doesn't have the arm strength on the run to just heave it into the end zone. Ricky Prohl in for Steve Smith. Terry Colbert motions, ball spotted at the 18. Foster cuts it back. It's down the 15-yard line, a pickup of three on the play. Steve Smith, the catalyst. Big time. He has four catches, 98 yards in the game. And Steven Davis is back in at we, running back. Can we go back early in, in the first half? If you remember the shot he took going across the middle by Jermaine Phillips that brought him over to the sidelines, I was talking, I said, you know, for some people in this league, that can change the way you think about playing this game. You see how Steve Smith responded. Boston Davis, a couple of blockers, makes the turn, and he stopped at the 12 by Derek Brooks. Strong tackling by Brooks and Phillips. Some hard hitting, but sure tackling. Looked like Davis was about to turn it into something big, and Brooks stepped up. Steve Smith is back on the field on a very important third down play for Carolina. I, I, he has injected hope. Deshaun Foster is going to the locker room. Don't know what that's all about. We'll try and find out for you. Carolina, one for eight on third down conversion tries in the game. Can I tell you from my experiences, going into the locker room is one of two things. We'll check it out in a moment. DeLone with time. He throws. That way. Intercepted by Rodney Barber. Barber has got to beat DeLone, who trips him up and brought him down. Rodney Barber, the playmaker. Three interceptions last week. He stops Carolina with a big pick. It took at least three off the board. Possibly seven. And what they do with it from here on out could be even more treacherous. First turnover of the game, and that hurts Carolina's chances. You need big playmakers to come up big. Steve Smith gave his team a chance to score with the big punt return, and then Rondé Barber came up big for his defense with an interception, the first turnover of the game. That's tough. That's a tough go. But you know, you put yourself in that situation. They, Carolina, did all the things they were supposed to do coming out in the second half. Cadillac Williams slips one tackle, but a nice gain of seven on first down up to the 48, make it six. Now Tampa Bay and Monty Kiffin in this defense, it's nothing new. A matter of fact, it's historical. You can't do much against them. And everybody in the league has known it, and they've known it for a long, long time. And the worst thing that can happen to you is if you get down on them. If you get down, in score behind Tampa Bay, and they unleash all the players that you just saw, those guys right there, hey, it can be a long day for you. On second and four, Cadillac Williams again. Gets to midfield, keeps pushing the pile, and he's just a little short of the first down line. Cadillac Williams, 22 carries, Look at these guys. 78 yards. The Bucks defense, there you go, look at the one for nine. They have stopped Carolina's offense eight times on third down conversion tries. Amazing. That, that, those numbers right there, that is big. There's a third and less than a yard for Tampa Bay. Bobby Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, has gotten his team ready to go. Right now, three tight ends, two tight ends in. Williams first down down to the 46 yard line again again Tampa Bay feeling a little cocky and confident about what they can do up front third and one they weren't attempting that earlier in the game 
Good block by the left tackle, Antonio Davis. The block to that lead sprung that play. It. You're right, you're right. And then they had the tight end over there, but the block that actually sprung it was Allstott. There's Davis, number 69. Sims went to the sideline for a quick consultation. Boy, you can see the growth of this young man, but he's running out of time here. He's going to have to use a timeout. Couldn't hear the play. Uses a timeout. The Bucks have a 10-point lead. Only one time left for them. Headset problem for John Gruden. Well, yeah, there's something wrong because the communication between the sidelines and the receiver inside Chris Sims' ear went out. Now, you see this right here? John Gruden had to go get them. He had to go get the walkie-talkie. This is, might be working with his coaches, the headpiece, but to their quarterback, there was no communication. So now he had to call a timeout and go to the sidelines, and Gruden had to get the walkie-talkie. Two tight ends in. First down at the 48. It's Cadillac Williams looking for an opening. Swings it outside. Turns it into a nice game. Keeps going and dives down to the 31. How about that boy, run boy. by Cadillac Williams? He must have done five different things there. He, Amazing. He changed direction. He slipped. He juked. And Cadillac Williams has gone over 900 yards this season. Well, it gets bottled up in here. See that? There's no place to go. He waits and waits and waits and pushes off that. Says, there's no place to go. I'm not going to force a place to go. I'm going to find where there's an opening. Third rookie in Tampa Bay history to rush for over 900 yards in a season. Joining Warwick Dunn and Eric Brett. And here's Cadillac again. And trying to bounce it outside. And he pushes off the would-be tackler. Great job as he knocked Brandon short away. Time for an update. Let's go to JB. Hey, Sam, you know, Chicagoans want to see more big plays from Kyle Orton. Well, play action. He delivers here up top to Bernard Berrien, 43 yards down to the goal line, one-yard line. Thomas Jones takes it across one yarder. The point after his miss, 21-9 Pittsburgh. Hey, Sam, I understand that Matt, your son, will have an expert color commentator working with him this week. <laughs> you knew that, JV, huh? I'm going to be a hockey color commentator for my son up in Danbury. Thanks, JV. Pittman and Allstott in the backfield. Ben like Williams has gone over a thousand or a hundred yards in the game. Fifth 100 yard rushing game. Pittman on the carry. Chris Draft on the stop down at the 22 yard line. Hey, there, there, there might be something more than just a headset problem. Look, Sims has to come over to the sidelines almost between every play as that clock's running. Now, with the lead, you want that play clock to run. Sure. However, you know, it must be crackling or some kind of problem in his headset because he has to get closer to John Gruden as he uses the walkie-talk. Third and two, Cadillac Williams in. They're eight for 14 on third down conversion. Blitz coming, play fake. Sims in trouble, finds Allstott. First down inside the 15. Gets a hit on the defender, gets out of bounds at the 12-yard line. He was in trouble, but it's the kind of trouble you want when you have a play-action bootleg. You want the defensive ends upfield in your face. Fake handoff, bootleg, Al Wallace in your face, throw over the top of you, and nobody is on that side of the field where all starts snuck out. This is an outstanding game plan today by John Fo John Gruden. Although he may not be happy with all the results in the passes and the drop balls, what he has done to Carolina's defense is masterful. Big backfield, Cook and Allstott. Allstott carries inside the 10 and down to about the eight yard line. He picked up three on the play. Al Wallace made the tackle and they're chewing up the clock now. A great drive from the 42 yard line by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after the Rondé Barber interception and return. Let's not forget, that was a good return by Rondé Barber back up to the 42-yard line. I'm just, I'm telling you, you can take it for however you want it. When you exude that much energy as Carolina did last week playing Atlanta. On second down, here's Allstott. Wanted to go outside, nice tackle on the play by the safety Marlon McCree. It, it, it lingers, Sam, it lingers. It's a hangover, your juices are empty. You, you, you're just depleted, it drains you. And it's something that 
Your body is used to filling up what you use up every week, okay? It's used to. But when you ex exude that much, a week's time isn't enough to get it all back together emotionally. So Deshaun Foster back to the bench out of the locker room. Right now the Carolina defense has to come through. Cadillac Williams back on the field. On third and nine, it's Williams. Cuts it inside, he goes in, touchdown! Yards after contact. Another great run by Cadillac Williams. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have opened up a huge lead on the Carolina Panthers. Yards after contact. He's had a ton of them today. I love the way this kid plays football. Wow, has he had a great game. Forget about the runner, the running, his speed, his moves. Half of what he does is because he wants to do it. And Chris Sims, you look at the young quarterback in his third year getting his first sustained chance at being the number one guy has done a terrific job, especially in the last five games. 27 carries, 117 yards for Cadillac Williams and two big rushing touchdowns. Tampa Bay with a 20 to three lead. Cadillac Williams puts himself in the Buccaneers record, bro record books, tying Warwick Dunn, James Wilder, and Ricky Bell for most 100-yard rushing games by a rookie. Amazing thing is, they haven't had a 100-yard rushing, not rusher, rushing as a team against Carolina the last five times they've played them. Yeah. Line drive kicked by Matt Bryant. Rod Smart on the return for Carolina. They need scores in a hurry. They need three scores. 36-yard line is where the offense will start. Not much time as Cadillac Williams is putting on a show. There's the numbers right in front of you. The last five times these two teams have played each other, 60 yards is about an average per game what they've gotten rushing the football. And today, Cadillac Williams has 117, and because of that, that's what makes this offense go. Both teams' offense go. Carolina needs points in a hurry. They need three scores. They go to Ricky Prohl, gets up to the 44. It'll be interesting to watch to see what happens here, how, they hand, how Carolina handles this. They've put themselves. Carolina has put themselves in a hole from the start of this game. Second and two. The Loma out of the shotgun. Pressure. He throws and finds Ricky Paul again. Inside the 40. Two completions. They're down to the 38-yard line. When Carolina came out and started this game with a nice drive and a missed field goal, they put themselves in a hole. I told you about the importance with these two teams of scoring first. Ron Bolden in as a fifth defensive back for Tampa Bay. DeLome hangs in there, finds his tight end, Chris Mangum, at the 27-yard line. Three passes, and they move down to the Tampa Bay 27. Only two timeouts remaining for Carolina. Green White is in at defensive end for Tampa Bay. Pressure on DeLome. Lofts it for Gardner, but way too far, and it's incomplete. DeLome has been a good comeback quarterback, but he's got a long way. He's got to pull off a miracle here. Look, there's nothing pretty in the NFL about a team that has to play catch-up. I, I think it's, it's ugly to watch because nine times out of ten, something bad is going to happen. Now, that one other time out of tenth, it's a thing of beauty that you don't want to miss because it means a comeback and it, it, it's special amount of effort. Oh, motion to Loam. Throws short, missed connection with Nick Goings out of the backfield. Bring up a third and ten. And the fans who have remained in the stadium with some boos for the Carolina offense. Frustrating time for John Fox. I thought they cut off booze at the start of the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> not from not from the fans. <laughs> Maybe from the concession stands. <laughs> Go buff. Buff. One turnover in the game. The interception thrown by Jake DeLome. Empty backfield. Gardner in motion. 
And the blitz on. Barber's got him. Rundy Barber with the sack on Jake DeLome. Remember I was talking Second about. Second sack of the game. Rundy Barber's 20th career sack. And he is the only cornerback to have 20 sacks and 20 interceptions in his career. Well, he's going to come from the right side underneath Rondy Barber. And he's the blitzer. And that's what he's fallen into that role. He never liked blitzing. He never liked it at all. Matter of fact, he was in college just a cover corner type of guy. But as he played the slot receiver as a nickel back in his early ages in the league, out of that position, they had to find a way to blitz him because teams were running the ball at him. There's a fourth down play. DeLone being chased. He throws short. Nick Going steps out of bounds. And I don't know what purpose. He couldn't, maybe couldn't help himself, but they turned the ball over on downs. I think he forgot. Honestly, I think he forgot. Nick I Goings was right along the sideline and stepped out of bounds, and the ball goes over to Tampa Bay. I, I don't think he knew what down it was. Why, you know, there's no other, he, he caught the ball and then stepped out. I don't. I really don't believe he knew. Was he off balance? What down it, I don't think so. Let's see. Southie comes back. Watch. He's got it. Yeah, you know what? He he has no idea what down it was. I promise you. So it's the Bucks ball on the 23. And that's why I was telling you, some of the guys today for Carolina were into the game. And some of the guys weren't. Cadillac Williams, he's been into the game for Tampa Bay. Flag on the play as he gets up to the 25-yard line. Only the second running back this year to rush for over 100 yards against the Carolina defense. The other one was Cadillac's teammate Holding at Auburn. 79, offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. Look, Ronnie Brown rush, rushed for over 100 yards for Miami in game three this season. And now Cadillac Williams goes for over 100 against Carolina today. You know, I, I talked about this one other time about Carolina when we did a game and them feeling pretty good about themselves and everybody got all up in arms. You know, you can't say that about our team. I mean, that's not a bad thing, you know? As a matter of fact, it's as human nature as you could possibly get. These things occur. Buck set back to the 18-yard line. They keep it on the ground for a couple of tough yards up to the 19. Timeout called for Carolina. They have only one remaining. Rondé Barber has developed into one of the premier defensive backs in the game a great playmaker 28 interceptions fourth most in Tampa Bay history 20 sacks most among cornerbacks and eight touchdowns on returns last week he had three interceptions almost had a fourth in the game against New Orleans and today you talk about a big play and the only turnover of the game he intercepted Jake DeLome with Carolina in striking distance at you know, the 15-yard line. You know what the secret to his success is? Simply this. He plays a bunch of different roles in that defense. Sometimes he's a cover corner. Sometimes he's a nickel guy. Sometimes he's a blitzer. And he studies and knows each one of his roles and knows every intricacy about it. And he knows how to apply himself and what to do in certain circumstances. Todd Stussy is in as an eligible tight end for blocking purposes. Protect for Chris Sims and will add some extra blocking for Cadillac. But Cadillac is dropped for a loss. Ball pop loose and it's ruled down. He was ruled down on the play. Al Wallace with the tackle. I really think that you have to tip your hats to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and what they've yeah. done here today. How much do you think Carolina missed Mike Rucker today? I, I don't, you know, I, how Would much? Would he have made a big difference? I'm not sure. Well, I think so. I, th I think especially because Chris Sims was able to sit in the pocket today with some confidence and make some throws. Sacked only once in the game. Good protection. Last time they played, Carolina sacked him six times. And Yara Walker's done a nice job with some help. Williams is pushed back by Brandon Short. If you're joining us right now, or if you've joined us just moments ago, first place at stake here. If Tampa Bay wins, 
Tampa Bay and Carolina will both be nine and four. However, Tampa Bay will have a three and one division record and Carolina will be two and two. So Tampa Bay will be ahead on the tiebreaker. Head to head will be one apiece. Carolina still has to play in Atlanta. There are division games still to be played, but for Tampa Bay, this was a vitally important game and they've come in and done a tremendous job. Chris Sims is about to go four and one in his last five with no interceptions. One, excuse me, one interception in those five games. He's 20 for 27 today, 138 yards and no picks. One thing I'll tell you about John Gruden, doesn't matter who's behind center, he's gonna make them play effective. Hey, you, he can go out and pick him anywhere he wants him. Whoever he gets, he is going to make them an effective quarterback in this league. Sims is growing into the role. Six punt of the game for Josh Bidwell. Gets it away. Chris Gamble on the return. He's hit immediately. Galvin Pearson with good speed gets downfield. Takes him down at the Carolina 49. This game could be seven point difference right now. From the opening drive, this missed field goal by Casey, which I think everybody in the stadium thought was a guaranteed three. Then there's the interception down here, which was at least three, hopefully seven. They're on the 15-yard line. I'm saying it could be a seven-point game, but there were so many other things that go into play into, into the cause and the outcome of this game. You know, Tampa did what we talked about at the top of the show. They ran the football, they got running yards, and off of that came points. Malone under pressure, finding Terry Colbert a little too high off his hands, flag, flag on the play. Uh, the receiver was out of bounds. See the hat off on the back judge? He has his hat off. He's running out there to talk to the referee right now. Look, he's, he has no hat. See that? And when, why they take their hat off is why they're backpedaling. If a receiver steps out of bounds, he can't be the pass. first to touch it. Number 83, offense. Went out of bounds, it was first to touch. Five yard penalty, still first down. Good call, Bill. Yeah, watch. Right. Now see on that jam, his foot goes yeah. out of bounds. Well, he comes back in the field of play, and even though he is reestablished, he cannot be the first receiver to touch the ball. Carolina short on time, out of timeouts, and they need three scores in the game. Hey, that, that was sloppy. The Goings thing was sloppy. There had been some sloppy plays. And that, to me, anybody else can see whatever they want out of it and take it however they want to take it. That, to me, is an emotional hangover, period. Colbert on the catch, and they give him forward progress for a first down, first catch of the game for Kerry Colbert. Jerron Bolden made the stop. As we wind down toward the two-minute warning, no timeouts, hurry up offense. DeLome steps up, throws short to Goings. Hit by Derek Brooks as he crosses the 35. A long way to come back. A miracle needed for Carolina. Today has been Tampa's day in Charlotte. Cowboy Mouth getting a lot of play. Cadillac Williams, he's been nearly invincible with a terrific day rushing for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. And the Bucks with a seemingly insurmountable 20 to three lead. DeLome on second down, trying to get it to Ricky Prohl. It's incomplete. Don't forget the post-game show. JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy standing by. Scores and highlights around the league. Fox Sports ticker. They get you up to date on everything going on. Coming up next week for Tampa Bay, John Gruden and the Bucks go to Foxborough, where it'll be cold, and they play a New England team that is leading 28 to nothing over Buffalo. 
today. That'll be a Saturday special. It begins with a pregame show at 12.30, Saturday afternoon, 12.30 Eastern time, followed by Tampa Bay and New England. Delhomme is sacked. There's a flag on the play. Dwayne White took him down. Check out the flag here. Today's game produced by Mike Brooks, directed by Rich Russo, associate director Tom Yoey. Offside, nose tackle, lined up in the neutral zone, five yard penalty, first down. So no sack on the play. Our broadcast associate Darren Foster, associate director Tom Yoey, technical producer Frank Phillips, pregame show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. Our senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown, the executive producers our Ed Gorin and David Hill, spotter in the booth as always, the great Gary Lynn, and our statistician Emmett McGuire. For Tampa Bay, this appears to be their fifth road win, which that in and of itself in the NFL is extremely tough to do. Five and two after today. You know, most teams build their team with the thought process, we'll win our home games. If we can get three to four on the road, we'll be in good shape, yeah. you know? I mean, just think about that philosophy right there. If you win your home games in your home stadium with your home crowd, heck, that's eight games. If you can pick up three games after that, you're sitting real doggone good. They've won five on the road. That's outstanding. Officials coming over the sideline, a little discussion going on. Against two of the division leaders at the time, Atlanta on the road when they played Atlanta, and then Carolina. So last week it was Carolina ending Atlanta's domination over the Panthers. This week it's Tampa Bay ending the Carolina domination over them after five straight wins. John Gruden and his staff have found a way. It, part of his mentality was to put the pressure on Carolina and make it seem as if it was Carolina that had to win this game. And yet when you looked at the standings, you knew that it was really very most important for Tampa Bay to give them a chance to win the division. Well, one of the things John did with his team this week was he didn't put that pressure or that kind of mentality on them. No, they didn't need it. But he did hit them with the uh, woe is me, no one thinks we're any good stuff, which you got to do. You got to do. Do you know why? Because that stirs a deep emotion. And I think if you, you can parallel that with society. When, when someone says that you're not good enough or you don't have a chance or you're no good, that stirs emotion deeply. Walt Coleman has come to the sideline, gone on the telephone upstairs and uh, not sure what the, the problem is. Whether it's a time problem, a clock problem. For Carolina, the Panthers have to play the New Orleans Saints go on the road, come home against Dallas, and then finish up the season in Atlanta. That's what's left for them. They will be tied wins and losses with Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay will be ahead of them by virtue of a better division record. Atlanta plays tomorrow night at home against New Orleans. Stephen Davis saw a little action. Deshaun Foster not as effective today as he was last week. Had the big game against Atlanta and a good job by Tampa Bay in shutting him down to holding him to just 46 yards on 14 carries. While Cadillac Williams, 29 carries, 111 yards for the Bucks. And with the, with the young quarterback, Chris Sims, John Gruden has done a good job protecting him, going with the two oh, tight yeah. ends and the big backs at times. Well, and, and everything they did to keep, as we said, talked about earlier, Carolina's defensive line off balance. They've mixed in a lot of different things. And early on in the game, all that shifting and motioning to try to confuse Carolina's de defense we and have, try to, to match sure up with it. The down and distance was four yards to make a first down. It was, so it is a first down. All right. They were checking whether it was a first down or not, and finally they got it straightened out. I will uh, say that Chris was kind enough to handicap the Rose Bowl for us. He thinks that Vince Young can pass the ball, that Texas 
can beat USC. I also said, thought he said that's off the record. No, that's that, thought, no, that I, he didn't yeah. say that was off the record. There were a couple of other things he said off the record. I, he, I thought he was just bragging about his alma mater. He didn't want that to go out. He's allowed to make a pick. Short pass to Steve Smith. Derek Brooks is there. And he is taken down by Brooks and Kelly on the short gain to the 25. Clock continues to run. Steve Carolina Smith. Carolina out of timeouts. He, he gave it his all today. I mean, he tried to put his team, the whole team, on his back and say, here, I'm giving you life. With the punt return and with that big catch, he took down the sideline. Five catches, 103 yards for Steve Smith. That catch made by Nick Going, slips a couple of guys, gets inside the 20. Looks like he's got a first down. For Steve Smith, he set a team record. Slow down, With Mitch. Eight 100-yard games. Eight 100 receiving yard games. And there's Kerry Colbert on the catch, gets down to the 10-yard line. Too much, too little, too late. This NFC is tough to predict, Bill. Just when it looked like Carolina might be the best team in the conference, Tampa Bay comes in and takes care of them. Good tip on the play by Derek Brooks. Brooks has made some good plays. And, and public perception really is bigger than reality. You think about it, because I don't think anybody really did believe in their hearts that Tampa could come in here to Carolina and beat them here. Given the statistics, given what they've looked at, given the last five times they've played, and a good job by the defense. They lost Booker McFarland early. Ellis Wims did a good job filling in for him. John Bradley was in for a little while, but mostly Wims on the inside did a nice job. Here's DeLome looking to the end zone, and he's got Ricky Kroll for the touchdown. Well, it isn't much. Maybe it's something to build on for Carolina. Ricky Prohl with a good grab. Now, go back to those missed opportunities we talked about, and we could have a tie football game. Second touchdown catch of the season for Ricky Prohl. John Casey will try for point. And it's 21. 20 to 10 with 23 seconds remaining in the game. And Carolina out of timeouts. Ricky Prohl goes up and gets it. Good position on Dexter Jackson. Well thrown pass by Jake DeLome. DeLome's 19th touchdown pass this season. NFL on Fox next week. Bill and I will be in St. Louis where Philadelphia meets the Rams. 49ers visit Jacksonville. Seattle is in Tennessee. Later, late in the game, Dallas and Washington, an important NFC East game. Nine plays, 51 yards on the drive. DeLome hitting Prohl with a 10-yard touchdown pass. Tampa Bay with their hands team on. Running backs, tight ends, receivers. And I think they threw in two linebackers. <laughs> Carolina overloads the right side. And John Casey will attempt the big bouncer. Oop, the <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? The wind picked up. <laughs> <laughs> and Let's for, try it again, and boys. And for Carolina, it's been that type of day. Yeah, that's right. False start. From empty caves come big <laughs> gusts of wind, Sam. <laughs> that's right. 
Casey tries again. There's the big bounce, and it is grabbed, I believe, by Mike Allstott. Yep. And he holds on, as he usually does. You're in good hands with Allstott. <laughs> no? Huh. So, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a very, very strong performance. They go to five and two on the road. Post game shows coming up. JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy scores and highlights around the league. Fox Sports ticker up to date updates you on your fantasy picks. I think the biggest thing you can turn to about this league, and when you look at this game, it's not who you play, but it's when you play them via injuries, via how they're feeling about themselves, via a, a number of things that can change the complexion of one team. Chris Sims, four and one in his last five, four and three since he took over as the starter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A very impressive performance, poised throughout. Passed, and you see the acknowledgement from Julius Peppers, they beat up on Sims when they last met in week nine. Today, yeah. Sims got the better of them. Big turnover in the game. Rondé Barber, the playmaker, the interceptor with his fifth pick of the season. And of course, Cadillac Williams. Boy, was he fine-tuned today, mm -hmm. rushing for 111 yards and two touchdowns. Both sides of the ball belong to Tampa Bay. What do you think about Tampa Bay going to New England, Bill? Well, Saturday. So I, you know, the thing about this team that it, I see right now, is there a team that just does what they got to do? Look, it doesn't matter who they plug in at quarterback. It doesn't matter who, what happens at running back and who's injured and who's not. This team is going to find a way to pull themselves together and play whoever they've got to play. And for the Carolina Panthers, it's a regroup time. Three games left in the season. But right now, Tampa Bay is in first place in the NFC South by virtue of their win today they are three and one in the division play that gives them the edge on Carolina the Panthers are two and two an impressive performance on both sides of the ball the defense was big early Carolina had a good drive it stalled they missed a field goal after that the defense shut down the Panthers Tampa Bay Buccaneers Come away with a 20 to 10 win. They end the domination of the Panthers over them. That streak is over at five. Carolina is beaten by Tampa Bay, 20 to 10. We'll be right back. Uh, that's a Nick Mike Burger line. That's a Mike Burger line. John Gruden, head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, remembers the ninth week of the season when they, his team was beat 34 to 14. Watches the Cadillac run hard. 14 yard score, 7 to nothing. Buccaneers over the Panthers. Steve Smith, top right of his screen, goes up. He is smoked by Will Allen. A legal hit, gets up, walks off the field, does return. Like I said, score is 7 to nothing now in the fourth quarter. Jake DeLone looking, thinks he's got his man. Ricky Pro but there he's picked off by Rondé Barber. Four touchdowns in the last two weeks. Remember, three last week against Atlanta. One in this football game. Cadillac Williams, first time in his career for multiple touchdowns. There he goes up the middle, his second of the year. Ten-yard score, 20-10. to 10, Tampa Bay over the Carolina Panthers. And I think I recall correctly that the three of you said that Chris Sims is doing a nice job. Indeed, he did. 20 of 27, 138 yards. And he talked without Jay Glazer after the game. All right, thanks, JB. Chris Sims, you guys have now swept all your opponents on the road inside your division. What's happened with you guys in the last few weeks to bring up that confidence? You know, we're just playing uh, We're playing tough, hard-nosed football. You know, our offensive line's controlling the line of scrimmage, doing a great job. We're not making a lot of mistakes. And, uh, you know, we feel a little bit underappreciated right now. I, I think a lot of people overlook this. You know, that seemed to have been the theme all last night, underappreciated the whole woe is me thing. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, hey, we watch we watch all the sports shows and we see all the uh, so-called experts, you know, picking the Panthers every week and, and whoever we're playing. So uh, we just want to keep playing and, and hopefully, you know, pile up these wins. You in the fourth quarter also, you've been stellar in the fourth quarter this season. Uh, going in to your starting stint here, what's happened now in the fourth quarter to show you that you have this confidence? Well, I think uh, it's like we, me and you were talking about last night, you know, the, the, the Redskin game. I think propelled us to at least give us a momentum and say, you know, we can get it done no matter what the circumstance. And, uh, you know, we, we've kind of just been following along that way. It hasn't always been pretty, but we've been making the plays when we had to. All right, thanks. Congratulations. Stop feeling Thank sorry you. for yourself. <laughs> JP, back to you.